Hello everyone, it's great to have you back on the Moon Challenge. I'm sure all of you are spending your evenings out in the open somewhere trying to get a glimpse of the moon. Well, that's the challenge. But yesterday was hardly challenging. What we saw on day three was a beautiful crescent moon with about 10 to 11 percent of its surface visible, well illuminated by the light of the sun. We also had a beautiful earth shine yesterday, but it is uh, more visible in beautiful pictures that have been taken. So I'm very excited to share with you all the beautiful pictures and the sights. This is what I saw particularly, a beautiful dusk with a red and blue color gradient going into the dark of the night sky. Uh, what you would see here is the moon and this bright dot which happens to be the planet Venus. Both of them are in the sky and especially they are going to be close by the next day on day four. So watch out for that. You can see here that with a normal camera or a wide angle lens, the moon looks really tiny. However, that has been used for good effect here. And you can see the moon and Venus very lined up with the horizon here. Uh, you can imagine the sun to be somewhere here and the light of it illuminating both the moon and the Venus. This, my friends, is a picture of an overexposed moon. In fact, this may not be uh, always what you intend to do, but here we intended to do exactly this. My friend Anirudha has clicked this picture to emphasize the Earth's shine which I had mentioned yesterday. You can see some part of the moon here is uh, illuminated by the Earth's reflected light, and this is of course the light of the sun, which is much more brighter compared to this. So you could not see both this and this part together. Hence, we had to turn up the exposure so that so as to uh, make the details here invisible or just flooded out with light so that we could see the rest of the moon. Well, yes, so that confirms that the moon is uh, there, the whole of it is there all the time. And uh, let's go on to see what details were seen. If you had a telescope available to you, you might be able to join your camera to it and take much more detailed pictures of the moon. This is one such picture and a beautiful one. In this, uh, what you see here is the limb of the moon, which means the edge of the moon. Okay, And that is the only part illuminated. We could only capture a sm small part of the whole crescent which is seen yesterday. But that is the most interesting part, which has some very uh, important features, well-known features of the moon visible. What are these? Well, to begin with, let me tell you some terms which are used when some uh, people who study the moon uh, speak in this kind of a lingo. So when you uh, hear them talking, they would talk about mares, uh, which is a Latin name for a sea, as uh, the parts and some parts of the moon were imagined to be in old times when we didn't have much knowledge of what they are. They also, of course, talk about craters, which are basically big depressions, big holes, on the surface of the moon, which would be created by an impact of an asteroid or a big rock coming from space. Well, the moon has no atmosphere, as you can see in this picture. It hardly, uh, it has this sharp edge here and hardly shows any haziness, which would be characteristic of an atmosphere. Uh, so there's nothing to protect the moon from incoming objects, incoming debris, and therefore uh, almost every impact leaves a crater. But to have really big craters, which are easily uh, visible in the binoculars or small telescopes, the impact must have been big. So let's see what did we see uh, in the moon or on the moon yesterday. Well, uh, to give you a direction, sense of direction, the east, this is the east direction of the moon. For us, it would be the west. Basically, this edge would be towards the west horizon. Just go back to the previous picture and you would see that the moon was like this for us. In this picture, it is like this. That is what happens when you uh, take pictures with a telescope. Of course, I could have inverted it, but this looks a little bit better. So for the moon, this edge is the east. 
for us, just for uh, our reference, this was facing the west yesterday. And what did we see on it? Well, you see this big flattish area coming into view here. That is Mare Crisium, the Sea of Crisis. I'm not sure what was the reason behind thinking of such a name for it. But well, when people were studying it uh, hundreds of years ago with uh, basic telescopes, I'm sure they did not have an idea of what these features were. And if they were imagining them to be some kind of a sea or an ocean, uh, I'm sure they could give a reason for naming it like that. Well, that is one of the first mares that comes into view when you have uh, this kind of a crescent. There are smaller features here like the Sea of Serpents, etc., uh, which are not so clear in this picture. The other important feature that you see must be this beautiful uh, crater here, uh, this perfectly roundish crater called Langrenus. The crater also has a small uh, elevation in the middle of it, as you can see. Well, this is also our first bigger craters visible when the moon starts becoming a crescent and begins its phase. So we have identified two of them for you. Of course, you can see there are many, many more tiny things to be identified. And this is what you can do if you take up the challenge, not just to see the moon every day, but to actually observe it with the telescope and actually spend some time identifying the objects seen on the surface. There are several uh, moon maps available. We will at some point of time uh, search the net and give you some links to some better maps which might be available for free. Of course, don't worry if you cannot find them or if we cannot find them, uh, we will give you the names of some of the most prominent objects on the moon. <laughs> Another beautiful picture. Now this one is a time series, a, a series of pictures uh, exposed on top of each other. So these were in, uh, uh, interspaced with some um, equal amount of time between them. And as you can see in this, the first picture of the moon was taken when it was here with the camera fixed in one direction. The next picture was clicked a little later, a little later, a little later, and these six pictures were then uh, superimposed on top of each other. That is another beautiful uh, way of uh, clicking pictures of the moon to give you a sense of the motion that is happening. Of course, most of the motion that you see of the moon going this way and all these stars, see this bright star going uh, down again, you have six images. Most of these would show six images. This basically represents the motion of the Earth from the west to the east. So as the Earth turns from the west to the east, the, all the objects tend to move the other way. Lovely way of showing it, right? And we have done this during the moon challenge. I'm sure we'll find some other challenging and uh, beautiful ways of representing the moon as we go along in the uh, coming days. So be with us on the moon challenge. Today is day four and Venus and moon are going to be together in the sky at one place, almost uh, close to each other. We will also have the star Aldebaran to look at. So I hope you take a, a look at it, maybe even uh, do some clicks. If you have any uh, good photographs, do share them with our uh, tags of moon challenge, hashtag moon challenge. And also uh, don't forget to tag us uh, at Hayuka Saiba. So good that you're continuing the challenge. Let me now go on and observe the moon today evening. All the best to you. See you tomorrow.